In this lecture, we'll give a quick introduction to deep reinforcement learning using the package called Crux. So for more formal information, uh, I'd suggest looking at Stanford's reinforcement learning course, uh, where the lectures are available on YouTube. So what is DeepRL? Well, deep reinforcement learning combines algorithms from reinforcement learning with techniques from deep learning, uh, namely the use of neural networks as function approximators and policies. The Crux package implements several DeepRL solvers using the POMDPs interface and using Flux for deep learning. Now, the problem we're interested in is an, a classic control problem called the swinging pendulum. Uh, this MDP consists of a pole that's fixed at a single point and control actions will apply torque to attempt to balance the pole upright. The actions, like I mentioned, correspond to the torque that's applied in the clockwise and counterclockwise directions, which correspond to negative and positive values, respectively. Uh, here we use two different action spaces depending on which solution algorithm we choose. Uh, one algorithm, called PPO, which I'll describe later, uses a continuous action space defined by a Gaussian with mean zero and unit variance, or variance of one, and then actions are sampled from this policy, which is represented by this distribution. And so we can use the action space function from Crux uh, to see this continuous action space with the parameters of the distribution. The other algorithm that we'll use in this notebook called DQN, which I'll describe after, uh, can only handle a discrete action space. So we provide a coarse discretization of five torque values, namely two torques, uh, negative two, excuse me, two clockwise torques, negative two and negative 0.5 two counterclockwise torques, two and 0 0.5, and one where no, no torque is applied at zero. Uh, and details on why we're forced to use a discrete action space uh, when solving with the DQN algorithm uh, will, be, will be discussed later. So here we define the discretization, and you can see if we call action space, again from Crux, we'll see that it's a discrete space of five values, uh, and here are the values uh, that correspond to that discretization. In this problem, our state space is continuous, meaning there's an infinite number of values that represent the state. So the state here is a real valued angle theta of the pole and the angular velocity of the pole, so how quickly the angle is changing. So we combine those two values here to create just a single state. And so since this is continuous, um, this continuous state space is then represented as two independent Gaussian or normal distributions with mean zero and unit variance or variance of one. We can call state space from Crux uh, to see this continuous space here. Now we define um, our MDP using the POMDP gym package. Um, this package wraps around OpenAI's gym environments, um, but it also implements some Julia-only gym-like environments, where the pendulum here is an example of one such environment. So we can call pendulum MDP, uh, given that discretization for the um, DQN algorithm that we'll use later, and we get an MDP object back. Next, I'll describe a concept called actor critic methods, which will be helpful when understanding the PPO algorithm I'll describe after. So actor critic methods, they use an estimate of the value function to help optimize the policy directly. And here, when we're optimizing the policy directly, as opposed to some value function and then selecting an action based on its value, uh, we call these policy optimization approaches. Um, and so here, the actor is the policy itself, and the critic is the value function. So for some intuition, it's called an actor because it takes actions using a policy, and it's called the critic uh, because it evaluates those actions using the value function. And here from Sutton and Bartow's reinforcement learning book, we can see how they play together in the entire reinforcement learning loop, where you have the actor as the policy itself, the critic that evaluates uh, the actions that come out of the policy, uh, and they kind of play back and forth to um, uh, improve the policy over time. So for our actor here, uh, we represent this as a Gaussian policy where the mean is approximated by a neural network. And so here uh, we're using flux to define the neural network, um, which is just uh, several layers that then we um, combine together into a continuous network policy. Uh, and so we define our actor, which is this Gaussian policy given that uh, estimated mean from this neural network. And uh, here just as a note, 
We're using this as a function so that every time we call this, we create a new instantiation of this network so that the weights are reset. And I think this is important. As for the critic, uh, the critic is represented as a neural network that estimates what's called the advantage, A, S of A, um, which quantifies the advantage of a specific action A over the greedy action. In other words, just compares their values. So the advantage is defined as the value of a specific action here um, minus the value of the greedy action, which often is just called the value. Um, and here you can, it can be replaced and thought of as we're maxing over all of those values to find the difference, rather the advantage here over some specific action versus that greedy action here. So again, we use flux to create this neural network that estimates the advantage. And finally, we can call the actor critic policy type um, which combines that actor and the critic together. Um, and so when we want to get utilities or values uh, from a specific state, we use the critic. And when we want to get actions from a specific state, we use the actor. And so this object itself, the pi actor critic, will be trained when we call solve later on. In other words, the weights of these internal neural networks um, are the things that are going to be changed and trained over time. So now to describe one of the solution methods we're going to employ, uh, it's called the Proximal Policy Optimization, or PPO algorithm. Uh, this is a deep reinforcement learning algorithm that implements what's called trust regions, or you can think of it as kind of enforced improvement. So PPO is an on-policy algorithm, meaning that during training, we learn from actions taken from the same policy that we're training. And we'll describe the counter to this, which is called off-policy next. So what we can do is we can call the PPO constructor, given our actor critic policy, the state space, the number of iterations, and a few other parameters. And then just like all the other solutions for other um, MDPs and POMDP solvers, uh, we call the solve interface, given that solver function and the problem itself. And we produce a policy. Here it's that actor critic policy that we trained over time. And so this took about 110 seconds, and we can actually visualize what this looks like um, just to ensure that, yes, this is actually correctly balancing the pull upright. So we can create a GIF here uh, using the problem and the policy itself. Uh, and just as a note, when we run this, uh, this will run in the background, so you can actually check the Pluto terminal itself for the training information as it goes along. Now switching gears a little bit to another solution method, uh, we'll talk about what's called deep Q networks. So um, the deep Q learning algorithm uses a concept called deep, a deep Q network as a state action value function approximator. So that QSA function approximation. And it introduces a concept called experience replay um, and a target network, in our case, the Q network, uh, to mitigate previously unstable approaches here. So the target network is used in the off policy setting, which means that during training, the policy used to select actions is different than the policy that is being improved. So the Q network here is a discrete network because it approximates this Q value, QSA, uh, for each discrete action A in the action space. Uh, and to select an action, it must perform some argmax over all possible actions, which is not well defined for continuous actions. So here, the policy for DQM, given some state, uh, has to do some argmax over all possible actions. And again, this isn't well defined for continuous action spaces. So here we're going to use a discrete network uh, that outputs uh, some Q value for each of the um, actions themselves. So the last layer has a length uh, for every action. And that's why this needs to be discrete or finite set of actions. And so the solver, what we can do, um, crux implements this DQN constructor. We pass in the policy we want to um, learn, which is this Q network, uh, and then some uh, the state space and the number of iterations we want to run. And just like before, we call solve with that solver, and we get a policy here. And this took about you know 39 to 40 seconds to run. And as before, we can see creating a GIF. Um, yes, this is actually correctly balancing the poll. Um, and what you'll note is, you know, the actions, since they're discrete, uh, they go, they kind of flicker between um, different values a little bit more frequently than you would see in the PPO. Um, and we can, I'll explain that later as well. 
So what we can also do is plot the performance of these algorithms compared to one another um, for a number of reasons. Mainly, you know, this is good to check, hey, is this algorithm in fact learning? Um, and we can see both DQN and PPO are learning here, but also it's a good way to compare the performance directly of different algorithms over the number of training steps. Uh, and so lastly, what I want to do is uh, compare the algorithms, or excuse me, com yeah, compare the algorithms and the difference between a discrete and a continuous action space. So what I'm going to do is um, bind sliders to the uh, angle for the states and the angular velocity here. And what we can see on the left is the output from PPO. So we, we get some action from the PPO policy. Uh, we call that A PPO. Um, and on the right, we get some action from the DQN policy, given this state, which is represented by these sliders. And if I move around the uh, just the angular uh, the angle of the pole itself as part of that state space that that, that state value, uh, you can see the difference in the actions that are provided by both PPO on the left and DQN. And you can see how on the left these are continuous actions. So these are all values um, that you see in between, as opposed to the right where these are kind of discrete, uh, discretized, stark actions. Um, and this is really helpful just to understand really what's going on um, in the whole space of actions here. We can also change the velocity too. So we can see how the um, actions are affected just by the velocity component of the state. Uh, and that's it for this lecture. Uh, I would refer back to uh, these references here, which are just a little bit more detailed on deep reinforcement learning and reinforcement learning in general and some of the uh, algorithms that I presented here. Uh, and in the next lecture, we will talk about imitation learning, which is learning from demonstrations.